All right, welcome everybody. I'm Rebecca. We are here live with Kitchen Craft Live. We have got something exciting for you today, a favorite of many. We're doing breakfast for dinner, or brinner, as many people like to call it. I don't know why we don't call it break ner or din fast, but we call it brinner, and that's what we're gonna make for you today. So stay tuned. We've got some crispy hash browns we're going to make in our square griddle, which is also a fan favorite. We'll also be making some an omelet nice cheesy omelet cheesy like me which i do have plenty of jokes for you tonight <laughs> in our nine inch saute which is a specialty item that we will be promoting at the end of the show so if you stay tuned you will get a special price on that one and we'll also be showing you the kitchen cutter which is something that a lot of people love it's a great tool for the kitchen to cut things quickly and easily and i'll show you all the five different cones and every component of that so please stay tuned until the end of the show where you will get a special discount opportunity on that nine inch saute so before we get started i want everyone to tell me where you're coming in from maybe how long you've owned your cookware i'm hoping this can be a little more interactive last time i felt like i just spoke to you guys and i didn't really give you a chance for any feedback so i am egg excited <laughs> for us to build that connection and have a great time so feel free to talk away i have josh and jessica the most amazing couple in the world helping me out backstage so thank you guys so much for that i want to remind you we do have a contest every week and then we also have a big one that i will tell you here in a second so if you send in a picture of a recipe that you make, it doesn't have to be some crazy gourmet meal. It can just be something simple, something you love, something you make for your family or yourself all the time. Send it to us at contest at cookforlife.com and we will enter you in a weekly contest to win the mini chopper. Woohoo! Everybody loves this. So also, if you send a picture of yourself with your cookware, we are going to do a big drawing on December the 6th to win our 9 by 13 baking pan. So that's super special. So if you send us a picture of your recipe or yourself and your cookware, you are entered to win. It's all random. So don't worry about, oh, is it dependent on how long I've owned my cookware? Is it depending on if I'm the best chef in the world? Uh-uh, nope, nope, nope. This is an equal playing field. We love you guys and this is our way of giving back to our customers. So that being said, I'd like to go ahead and get started. But before I do, if you love breakfast, especially breakfast for dinner, please say I like the breakfast loving pirate that you are, right? <laughs> yes, go ahead and type that in the chat for us. We're gonna try to make this a little more interactive. So to get things started, to make my hash browns, I'm gonna use this handy dandy kitchen cutter which is made out of chrome. And you know what? I can't see your comments. I might have to scroll up to be able to see your comments for some reason. Let me see if I can do I'm gonna step out of frame for a second here. I apologize. I don't know. I don't know where I went. That's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, Josh and Jessica will help me out in that department. I would love to see, we'll get, we'll get that eventually. We're Melanie working up the cake. breakfast is her favorite meal. Oh, Melanie says breakfast is her favorite meal. Absolutely. A lot of people, I think that's why Brinner breakfast for dinner is so popular because it's the favorite meal at a lot of people's favorite time of day. So it's like the perfect marriage of food and time. So Brinner, that's what we're doing. Awesome. Well, welcome Melanie and welcome everybody else who's joining us today. So I have the kitchen cutter, which is going to cut my potatoes, but I want to demonstrate it first and show you why it's super cool. First of all, it's made of chrome, which if you had a car from maybe the 50s or the 60s, let us know. I actually saw one of those old school taxi cabs at Publix, our grocery store down here, down south, the other day, and it just made my day, and I thought about this kitchen cutter. A cool feature is it comes apart, so if you want to store it in your kitchen, you don't have to worry about having it all together. You can unassemble it and then reassemble it very easily. There are three suction cups that you stick to your countertop and then it comes off very easily. I'll show you at the end. Five cones that um, do five different kinds of shapes. And we'll start with the first one. These are stainless steel, easy to clean, don't rust. If you do notice some discoloration, all you gotta do is use your little scrubbing pad and you're good to go. 
So a tip that I learned as I was learning this, just along with some of you that might have just gotten your kitchen cutter, is to, you want to align the center hole here first, and then you can lock in a place going clockwise. And look at this, you're safe. You can put your fingers in here. You're not gonna cut yourself. I'm somebody that, unfortunately, I cut myself all the time when I'm, when I'm using a knife. So this is great, nice and safe, nice and sturdy. And we have a finger guard too, which is really cool. So this first cut, with our potatoes, which by the way, oop, this way? Josh says I need to move the bowl. I don't know if it's left there or right. Is a seal. Oh, this, this way? The potato bowl. The potato, oh, the potato bowl. Oh, move it here? Oh, <laughs> I thought you said more potatoes, not move potatoes. So I was like, okay, we're getting to the potatoes, Josh. Don't worry. <laughs> um, so, okay, I love this joke, guys. What is a potato's favorite TV show? You can write that in the comments. What do you think a potato's favorite TV show is? And I'm gonna start doing this and show you how easy this is while you're telling me what you think it is. Are you ready? Starch Trek. <laughs> wow, that's bad. So bad it's good, right? All right, so I'm gonna keep going. This, this is a fine cone number one. I should probably speed things up. I apologize, last time I was going too fast. I'm trying to figure, figure out my speed, but we'll get there in time. So this, you can take out your potatoes. You can kind of, I don't know if you can see here how thinly sliced there. This is for fine, you can do cheese, you can do all kinds of veggies, just amazing. So that's our first cone. The second cone, which we'll actually be using to make the hash browns, this does a nice, Mm, mid-size, perfect for hash browns or cheese. Look at that, so beautiful. And I love this finger guard because then you don't have to worry about cutting yourself like I tend to do sometimes. And then, so I'm gonna take that out. Next, we have cone number three. This one gives us our nice uh, homemade french fry. So I'm gonna use another potato for that one. Show you that. Does anybody make french fries at home? I would like to know. Tell us if you make maybe sweet potato fries. It's the perfect size for french fries. Or size for fries. <laughs> that rhymes. All right, next we have our fourth cone. I'm gonna start showing you carrots because these will actually go uh, round. This is a nice cut if you wanna do radishes or things like that. Woohoo! See how easy this is? You're not gonna cut yourself, it's safe. And I don't know if you can see how beautiful that came out. These are just perfect. And last but not least, I've got my fifth cone, which will do a more of a waffle, kind of a ruffle cut. I wanna make sure that's in, that's in there good. Solid. All right. And if anyone has any favorite breakfast recipes, I would love to hear those. I'm excited <laughs> to hear your breakfast recipes. I told you I have bad jokes tonight, not good jokes. I know they're terrible. A lot of puns. All right, and this, of course, is a ruffle cut, and you can use your finger protector there, the guard, and voila, wonderful, wonderful. So, wonderful tool that I'm gonna use to go ahead and make my hash browns. So I'm gonna set this aside. We don't need this anymore. We're actually gonna start rocking and rolling with the hash browns. We're gonna use cone number two. If you have one of these, if you have a kitchen cutter, let us know. Do you love it? What do you make with it? We'd love to hear that. All right, and thank you, Jessica. She is typing away. I'm sure we got plenty of comments. Love to know where everyone's coming in from. Spring Lake, Michigan. Miss Joy Ann here. And Cindy from Utah. Wonderful, Joanne and Cindy, wonderful. That welcome, welcome. So glad you're here with us. Melanie from New York. Awesome. Welcome. So glad you guys are here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting up my potato to get my hash browns going. Step number one. Get the spuds spuds going and this is it's nice it kind of leaves you with the parts that you don't want easy peasy don't have to worry about even peeling your potato lovely I'm actually not going to make too much just enough to maybe cover the griddle 
I think that's good right there. And you can stick your finger in there and you don't even have to worry about any injury. This is a very safe tool for your kitchen. This is the kitchen cutter. All right, so that is step number one, is cutting your potatoes. And I'll go ahead and move this. We got suction cups on the bottom. All you gotta do is pick them up one at a time. Boom, boom, boom. The green bowl oh, the green bowl, oops. Hopefully you still can't see it. Um, okay, so you're just gonna pick each little suction cup up at a, suction cup up <laughs> at a time and lift and you're good. Now you can move this and we're gonna get this set aside. And the next step is to put ice water. This is the surprising thing that I had to learn because I usually, I've never done homemade hash browns until now. I usually just kind of get like the freezer ones, but this is so much better for you. We're gonna use ice water to stop the oxidation. Thank you, Jessica. She's our trained chef, resident chef, in-house chef that gave me that tip. We're gonna soak it in here for a minute. And actually, while that's going on, I'm gonna turn on my griddle, the heat, to about medium. Uh, usually we say medium low is the way to go, but in this case I would say, you know, you could actually go a teensy bit higher, but you might wanna start on the safe side as medium. I'm gonna set this aside as well. Okay, and then I want to drain out the water from my potatoes. And if there's any way that you like your hash browns, let us know if you like them smothered, kind of like Waffle House, you know, they like smother them, cheese, onions. There's so many ways to make them. This is just gonna be basic, basic hash brown recipe. And it's amazing how much liquid, I should have shown you before I put, uh, I added water, but it's amazing how much liquid is actually already in the potatoes. That's why we can do waterless cooking is because Vegetables already have so much water content. And then I take my paper towel and I try to get as much of the liquid out as possible. You might be able to use a cheesecloth, but I've been using paper towels for this. Hopefully you can see everything. Yes, please let us know where you're coming in from. Welcome. Making breakfast for dinner tonight if you just joined us. And we're doing homemade hash browns. We just shredded our potatoes and now we're drying them off. About to put them in the griddle. All right. So we're all set there. So I think what we'll do is spray the griddle. And I like to use just a regular olive oil spray, but it's up to you if you want to use something more of an oil, but this is a healthier way to go. And I find that it works just as well to make it Sure that your potatoes aren't sticking. Give it a good, generous <laughs> coat there. Woo. And I would love to know, are you guys more of coffee lovers or tea lovers? Because that's definitely breakfast beverages. That's important. Let me know what you guys enjoy. And a good test to see if the hash browns are ready to go in is you put a piece in and you're waiting for it to sort of bubble. I'm gonna scoot this over so you can see a little better maybe. Hopefully they can see okay. Yes, awesome. Oh yeah, it's bubbling. So we're gonna go ahead and put the rest of our hash browns in there. Making that beautiful sizzle sound. Woohoo! Yes. All right. And I meant to get my salt and pepper. Usually I would season it with salt and pepper, but that's all right. You can season it however you like. And then of course, whatever condiments afterwards, like ketchup, I, I love ketchup. You can use that as well. So I'm gonna pat this down with my spatula. And this will cook for about, I'd say 10 minutes. I'm gonna let it do its thing. And in the meantime, we're gonna start that omelet. Um, which I'm very egg excited about. I can't, that's <laughs> the joke of the day. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna turn this on low. 
which is always good for your eggs. And remember, because eggs are pure protein, you want to have a spray, some kind of oil, something. So we'll go ahead and spray that as well. This is our nine inch saute, which is going to be the special discounted purchase opportunity at the end of this cooking segment, uh, which we do have a winner, by the way, for this mini chopper. And then we're going to talk about how you can get this nine inch saute for a really great price. So we're going to spray it down. I like to be generous with this as well since it's eggs and it's pure protein. And this is really the perfect size for an omelet. Um, it's not too big, not too small. It's just right. It's the Goldilocks of pans for your omelet. And I already whisked together three eggs, but it's up to you. How many eggs do you typically put in your omelet? I'd love to hear that. Some people do two, some people do a little more. Just let us know about your omelet and also what your favorite omelet toppings are because you can go to town. You could do vegetables, you could do meats. Uh, we did ham the other day when we made this in the office, ham and cheese, which was fun. Um, but I'm gonna keep it cheesy like me and just do cheese. So our pan should be pretty well heated up. And I'm going to pour the whisked eggs into the pan, like so. Beautiful. Excellent. <laughs> See how many egg puns I can throw in there and crack you up. It's terrible. Josh and Jessica aren't laughing. I know it's bad when they're not laughing. <laughs> Tough crap. Uh, so, we are waiting for this to cook. Essentially, you can add your toppings whenever you feel like. I'm gonna let it cook a little bit more and then I'll put my cheese in there. Looks like our hash browns are rocking and rolling. And in the meantime, I'm just gonna check in with Josh and Jessica and just see if there's any comments or questions that we need to address while everything's kinda getting, getting going. Coffee! Okay, so we have a lot of coffee lovers. Amazing, awesome. I love coffee too. I actually used to be a barista. I will not name the coffee shop, but I'm sure everybody's been there. And uh, <laughs> I got very familiar with beans and roasting and coffee and all that jazz. And then for some reason recently, I've kind of turned British and I drink a lot more tea now, but I still love coffee. So um, definitely gives you that caffeine boost that tea doesn't always give you. So wonderful, welcome all my coffee lovers. So good to have you here. And this would all pair very nicely with coffee or tea or orange juice or a mimosa, which I was tempted to have mimosas for everybody here. Kind of wish you guys were here with me. That would be fun to have mimosas. Have Bernard from California on. Bernard from California. Hey, Bernard. That's right, you're having some love and support from Orlando. Oh, I, she goes to my church. <laughs> Hi, Carolyn. Thank you for coming. She thinks you look amazing tonight. She's so excited watching the show. Thank you, Carolyn. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Awesome. Well, welcome for joining me. Trying to make breakfast. Trying to make it. Well, we are. We're making breakfast for dinner. But she knows me. She knows I'm just, you know, not, you know, I'm not a trained chef. She knows this. But I do my best, and this cookware makes it effortless. And if I can do it, Anyone can do it. So thank you so much for joining me. All right, I'm gonna check. I don't think this is ready just yet. But what you essentially want your hash browns is to be brown on, on one side. Ooh, we're getting there. We're getting really close. Um, actually, hold on. They might be ready to, they're ready to flip. And then we're getting close here. So I'm gonna see. You can do section by section. Not too shabby, huh? I bet this sounds good too. It sounds good here. I can, hopefully you guys have it in like HD <laughs> surround sound, hash browns. Maybe one day they'll come up with taste vision where you can taste it through this screen. Wouldn't that be nice? Instead of just watching it and drooling. There we go. So we got, we got it flipped. We're going to let it sit a little bit longer. I like to continue flipping it. It's totally up to you. Meanwhile, in omelet land, I'm going to go ahead and put my cheese in my omelet. And I like to do half, the half that I'm not going to flip over because, of course, with an omelet, you have to fold it. Fold it very nicely. By the way, fun fact, 
Does anyone know where hash browns were first invented? The city where hash browns were first invented. I'd be interested to see. I did a little research myself. I didn't know. I had no idea. I was like, huh, who came up with hash browns? Where did they start? So I have like a rough year. Okay. <laughs> Josh's don't tell you guys. Not yet. Yeah, I will and eventually. I have a, a rough year and a definite city. So if you tell me the city and the year that hash browns were invented, without Googling it, don't cheat. Uh, you just get kudos for being super smart because I didn't know this. Did you guys know that, Josh and Jessica? Did you know wh where they were invented? The city? Mm, okay, yeah, nobody knows. So, I mean, this is just something you'd have to be a super food nerd, I guess, so, a breakfast nerd. Oh, and you know what? <laughs> we're in the south here in Florida. Well, I, you know, I consider it the south. And to me, when you're cooking on this griddle breakfast here, this is southern hibachi, right? This is how I feel like, <laughs> I feel like a little southern hibachi chef. I love hibachi. If you've ever gone, it's so fun. They make it a whole show. They go butterfly, and then they, they put the butter on, and yeah, but they're funny. <laughs> I guess I'm aspiring hibachi cook for kitchen craft cookware. All right. So we're still waiting. I don't know if you guys can see my omelet. Still got a little ways to go. Hash brown still, still going. I would love to know um, what, uh, maybe what favorite things do you like to pair with hash browns and omelets? If you could add a third thing, would you do toast, biscuits, grits? We love grits here. Um, let us know how you would complete your meal because now i'm thinking and even jessica said this behind the scenes she said she toast would have been perfect you know some kind of bread and she's right that would have really complemented everything so but this griddle is really look at this it's beautiful people love this griddle it's great for camping it's portable it is just you can make eggs on here pancakes versatile wonderful and it's so fun, you know? How many people have griddles? I know I didn't before I worked here, so I just, it's, it's a fun piece of cookware that you should definitely own. So if you don't have the griddle, check it out. We are on kitchencraftcookware.com where you can find all of these wonderful items. And don't forget, at the end of the show, we will have a discounted purchase opportunity for the nine inch saute, which again, perfect size for the omelet. You'll see once I fold it over, that it all really comes together nicely okay so the one side i'm looking at to fold over is still not really cooked it's funny because the part with the cheese looks pretty good so i have to <laughs> I have to wait and patience is not my virtue i applaud those of you who are patient if you are patient say i i would love to hear you i'm taking that from tony robbins he if you listen to his motivational speeches he always says say i <laughs> when you say i <laughs> Thank you, Tony, for that good old motivation. And um, there's also a saying, speaking of motivation, that they say the same hot water that uh, boils the egg softens the potato. So it's good to remember that sometimes in your circumstances in life, it might be hard, it might be hot, you feel like you're in the fire, the heat, but you can use it to soften you or harden you. So just some little, a little life, little life wisdom from Kitchen Craft Cookware. All right, these bad boys are pretty much, I mean, they might, it depends on how crispy you want them. To me, I like things a little undercooked, which unfortunately the office found out the other day when we made some pasta, it was super al dente. Um, but I probably should cook these a little longer, so a little crispier. My omelet might be ready to flip. I'm gonna use, I found a little special that I actually really like to use to get underneath here. Oh yeah. So what I'm gonna do, is you gotta, this is live TV, no pressure, right? You gotta get it under there and halfway, oop, actually probably need to cook just a smidge longer. But you have an omelette. So did anybody guess, uh, Josh and Jessica, where the uh, uh, ham, hamlet, <laughs> omelet and hash browns, hamlet, <laughs> and I'm a theater person. We had, we had several guesses. We got, someone said Amsterdam. Oh, that's a great guess. Amsterdam. Frankfurt. Frankfurt. Idaho. Idaho, because potato is smart. Yep. Uh, let me see here. Oh, no. And I think that's all I'm saying. 
Nice. Really great guesses on where the hash browns were invented. It is actually New York City. So we have somebody from New York. I don't know if you're from the city or if you're from upstate, but yeah, New York City in the 1890s. Long time ago, believe it or not. Um, so that's kind of just a little fun fact. Oh yeah, I'm going to turn this off because now these are definitely done. Awesome. So maybe while I'm actually taste testing all of this, I'm wondering if we should switch to our um, our shout out segment. Would that be a good time? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and plate this. So we have some pictures of our wonderful customers that we would like to highlight. Don't forget, if you send us a picture of yourself and your cookware, you get entered to win in our monthly drawing for that nine by 13 baking pan. But if you send us a picture of a recipe, and all this goes to contest at cookforlife.com, you can enter for our weekly drawing to win the mini chopper, which is this little guy right here. And again, it's random. It doesn't matter if your recipe is five star, you know. We're just looking for pictures from our wonderful customers. All right. So let's see who we've got. I don't know why it's not coming up on my screen. Okay, it takes a minute. <laughs> Sorry, there's a five second delay. Five second delay, folks. You know, the beauty of technology, it's beautiful, but then sometimes it's not exactly what we would hope for. Yeah, I don't know why. I, I guess maybe because it's showing me Facebook and not. Yeah, okay. All right, so Josh is going to tell me who we've we got. got. Steve Kite from. Oregon, back here. Steve, Steve Kite, Kite from Oregon. 21 years. 21 year uh, owner. Schooling from Florida, 27 years. Mm. We've got Kathy Randolph from Tennessee, 62 years. And we've also got Margaret Robertson from New York, 4 years. And now folks, we have quite a few more of these actually coming in from next week um, that we're building out. So we do want to show you what's been coming in, and we'll have some older ones as well. So those of you who've been in the past, we will bring you back into the contest. Thank you for rejoining us. Wonderful. Thank you, Josh. I hope you guys were able to hear him. Um, so we have got our omelets ready to play. Look at that. Perfect size, right? I hope you guys can see this. Hash brown omelet, easy peasy, made from scratch. So delicious. I'm going to take a bite. Um, but while I do, oh, <laughs> I think I want to tell you guys about our purchase opportunity. Maybe then would be a good time to take a bite. So we are going to be discounting this nine inch saute pan that you saw me make my omelet in. You can do other things as well. You could even fry an egg, you could scramble eggs, whatever you want to do in this pan, perfect size. If you're like me, you live alone, this is great. You don't have to worry about making a big, huge meal. This is perfect for little things that you want to put in there. You can even do a pancake in there if you wanted. And we are going to offer that. I know Josh has got the graphic that he'll show us. Mmm, hash browns are good. <laughs> oh, and I'm going to try this omelet too. Mmm, 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 mmm. Oh, perfect. All right, so originally $265 for the Niner Saute. Now it's discounted $189. Such a great deal. Only tonight. This is a special piece that it's kind of like one of those things if you don't have it already it's hard to get and so this would be a special opportunity for you to own a piece of kitchen craft cookware that's hard to find so great 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 nine inch saute so please tell us the word saute s-a-u-t-e type that in the comment box if you'd like one and we will get to you and we'll make that happen Tonight, remember, this is a one night only thing, you know, like from Dream Girls, one night only. So, uh, <laughs> we're going to give you that great deal. Just type in the word saute, S A U T E. You don't even have to worry about that little accent mark on the E. You can or you don't have to. We'll know what you're talking about and we'll give it to you for that wonderful discounted price. Oh, I think everything is so good. It turned out amazing. I hope you guys were able to see 
how quick, how simple, just easy, fun, the cooking can be making breakfast for dinner. Um, I love a little ketchup or hot sauce on this too. You can go to town and all that jazz. So, oh, I'm sorry, Josh. Oh, let's show you the plate one more time. Although I did eat off of it. Can you see it there? Not too shabby. <laughs> Came out really well. So, last but not least, I want to tell you we have a wonderful show lined up for you next week. We're gonna be highlighting our round baking pan, making a veggie pizza, and it's probably not what you think. This one's got cream cheese, and it's a cold edition of a veggie pizza. And then for Halloween, because it's right around the corner, we'll be making a spider cookie cake. And who doesn't love a cookie cake, right? Who doesn't love cookies and then a cake and then put it together and it's just like perfect. And you put a little spider on top and it's even better. So I'm really excited for that next week and I hope you'll join us. We're here every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So our last little thing that we like to do during these cooking shows is a little Q&A to see if anyone has any questions that I can answer about the cookware, about the recipes, about the meals, anything you would like to ask. We would love to help you out there. Again, we use the griddle for the hash browns. So if you go to kitchencraftcookware.com and you're interested in purchasing any of these, you would look for the griddle. You would uh, look for the nine inch saute, which actually if you just type in the word saute tonight, S-A-U-T-E, you'll get that for a discounted price tonight only. And then we also use the kitchen cutter, um, which is great if you wanna cut up any sort of vegetables from the smallest, finest cut to french fry cut to round cuts to waffle cuts, which all look like those ruffled potato chips. You could make homemade potato chips if you wanted. I mean, it's so versatile, coleslaw, salads, the sky's the limit. Just your imagination really is the limit. So have fun in the kitchen with these crafty tools. Yes, indeed. And we do have a winner. Oh, did I, we didn't mention our winner, did we? Oh my gosh, I am so sorry. We have a winner this week for our mini chopper. He was the only one to send us a picture because we asked all this week to send us a picture of yourself with your cookware. So thank you, thank you so much to this gentleman. And I actually would like to read what he sent us because it was so touching to me that he's had the cookware since 1960, 1960, that long, like a crazy long time. And he still uses it. It looks like it's brand new and he's going to win our mini chopper. So the winner, if we're ready for him, is Mr. Marvin Bouchot. And I want to read what he said. He said, in 1960, my parents bought the complete West Bend cooking system when we moved into our first new house. My sister inherited the set. In 2013, so fast forward, like, what is that, 53 years? I bought the Elite Kitchen Craft after we remodeled our house and kitchen. See, he's still loving it. He keeps up buying things. In 2014, I bought my son the Deluxe Kitchen Craft set as a housewarming gift for his new house. In 2015, I bought the Basic Kitchen Craft set for the RV and free knife set. Now I don't have to carry pots and pans back and forth after a trip. He's a retired Navy supply officer and replaced all knobs with the US Navy knobs. So thank you so much Marvin for your service and anyone else out there who has served our country, we appreciate you. And you are Marvin, the winner of this mini chopper. We will send you this with a little handwritten letter from me, Rebecca, your host. And we are so grateful to you and being a valued customer with Kitchen Craft. So if there aren't any questions, you don't want me to tell more bad jokes. I might actually have, I might. <laughs> um, everyone said the breakfast looks amazing and delicious, so no questions. Awesome, thank you. Well, we've had a couple purchase options and things of people who need extra pieces. And oh, okay, we got some people purchasing some things. Oh yeah, Watch keep this. it coming, please. We would love to have you add to your cookware. Holidays are coming, you might need some pieces, especially bakeware. You're gonna be baking a lot this holiday season, or you might know people getting married. This is a great gift. And with the holidays, it's also a great gift to put under the tree or you know, whatever you're celebrating, make sure you get gifts for your family and friends. So thank you so much for watching. If we don't have any other things that uh, 
to answer for you. And of course, you can always reach me at Rebecca at cookforlife.com. Anytime I'll answer your questions or comments. Uh, I really appreciate you watching. We are so grateful. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts at Kitchen Craft Cookware. We hope you enjoy and have a wonderful evening and happy cooking. All right. Bye, guys.